Hey friends, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about portfolios. We're going to be focusing especially on data scientists, data analysts, software engineering, data engineering, and basically like more technical professions. That's just because that's what I know best. So first we're going to talk about what a portfolio is. Then I'm going to explain who benefits the most from having one and finally go a bit more in depth about how to structure your portfolio and what to put in it. Throughout the video, I'll also be showing you guys this portfolio website that I made using Wix who is the sponsor of today's video. You guys, I'm doing my first sponsorship. Are you proud of me? <clears throat> Be cool, Tina. Wix is a professional website builder that has over 500 eye-catching templates that are also highly customizable using their drag and drop editor. And most relevant to this video, Wix has dozens of portfolio-based templates to get started with and customize as you see fit. You can get started and create your own portfolio and slash war website by clicking the link below or in the descriptions. Okay, first off, what is a portfolio? Technically, what I mean by portfolio here is what is known as a resume portfolio. There are also other types of portfolios, like stock portfolios, which is clearly not what we're talking about. But in essence, a, but in essence, a resume portfolio is a way of showcasing the work that you've done that complements your resume. Note compliment not replace in my the resume that got me into fang video i keep harping on the point that your resume should tell a story about yourself and should try to be your best to demonstrate your skills as opposed to telling people that you know a skill for example instead of just saying that you know python you have entries that demonstrate your knowledge of python by having projects that are done in python or you have work experience in which you use python to create some sort of real life impact for example Maybe you save the company X percent of the cost by identifying an efficiency. So you clearly had to have known Python. Or instead of just putting leadership skills in a skill section of your resume, you demonstrate that by having entries where you're leading a team at work or maybe a club at school. Now, the portfolio takes this a step further. With your portfolio, you're able to demonstrate your skills even more vividly because people can visually see the projects that you've done and they can learn more than just the two to three lines that you have in your resume to explain it. Your portfolio can also double as your personal website where you can go more in depth about some of the more tangentially related things that maybe you like mentioned for like the last line of your resume. For example, now that I have a YouTube channel, that would probably show up as maybe like a line or two on my resume, probably at the bottom if I'm ever job hunting for a data science job because a recruiter would probably see it as something that's like tangentially related, but not central compared to my other work experiences. But to me, it's really important. And I think it makes me unique. And I think it also demonstrates a lot of important skills like communication, community building and leadership. And I want to be able to showcase that. And finally, I see portfolios as a great tool for yourself as a way of aggregating all the different things that you're currently doing, learning and building. See, like resumes are great, but the problem with them is that a resume is all about the things that you've declared mostly finished at least and you know they are supposed to be like impactful and have positions with labels like goldman sachs where like you know consulting club person at penn but what about the things that you're currently doing and learning things that might not have such clear-cut labels you know that's what i think a portfolio is also really useful for it's for showcasing the things that you're working on right now that might not be all like cut and dry and complete to show up on your resume yet for me, that's where I'll be showcasing more of my recent interest in investment and trading, like the trading bot that I'm going to be building. All right, so who benefits the most from having a portfolio? So first off, I want to say that not everybody needs a portfolio. In fact, I didn't actually need a portfolio when I was job hunting. And the reason why I didn't need one was because I had previous experience in my domain and I also had a proper official paper from UPenn for a master's in computer science. See, my profile was pretty easy to understand and the things on my resume were enough so that recruiters are probably just like, she probably has the correct skill set, and I was able to score interviews like that. On the other hand, the people who benefit the most from a portfolio are those that are self-taught, have a unconventional career path, as well as just career changers and people who have done a lot of different projects, especially freelance and consulting type projects. Another situation that benefits more from having a portfolio is if you're interested in smaller companies, startups especially. And this is because large companies aggressively lean on ATS to screen resumes. And even afterwards, there's just so many candidates that recruit are unlikely to spend a lot of time going through your portfolio much, if at all. 
But for smaller companies and startups, they tend to be more holistic in their approach and are more likely to take the time to dive deeper into your resume and portfolio before deciding to invite you for an interview. For example, my friend and a program manager and mentor from Chronic Coder Academy, Eric, is a self-taught data scientist that generally works for mid-sized to smaller sized companies. Hiring managers are really excited and interested in his portfolio projects, and he's actually gotten hired because of them. Oh, and by the way, this is what his portfolio looks like. Um, although he did tell me to tell you guys that he is planning to do a complete overhaul very, very soon. So do check back later as well for more inspiration. Yeah, so if you have a similar background and slash war career goal to Eric, the portfolio is extremely beneficial. But what if you have a background that's more similar to Tina from two to three years back? Have a relevant degree, some relevant experience, haven't done anything particular, unusual or interesting. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, just by the way, I just mean like there's nothing on my resume that would have seen particularly complex or confusing to a recruiter. And finally, I was aiming for big tech and bank. So really, really large companies. Then no, I actually don't think you need a portfolio to get an interview or ultimately land a job. Would it have helped? Debatable, perhaps. Okay, like I feel like for my specific situation, it could have been helpful in landing a data science internship specifically, since I could have had a portfolio that showcased my data science experiences and projects, since my resume was more biased towards like software engineering and computer science from my formal education perspective. But overall though, I don't think it would have been a game changer. But for Tina today, I think a portfolio is quite important and, and can be very beneficial. And that's primarily because, you know, from since two to three years, ago, I've done actually a lot of different things that kind of strayed out of the traditional path of a data scientist like YouTube, which is why when Wix reached out to me, I kind of consider this as a sign that I should probably get my shit together and stop watching anime and finally make a portfolio. All right, time to talk about how to structure the portfolio and what to put in it. It's also time to show you guys the portfolio that I made, which I'm super excited about. So let's jump into it. And here it is. So this is my portfolio website. I'll run through each of these tabs separately as well. And I'll also use it to explain how I decided to structure my stuff. So starting off, this is the main page that you land on. And this is also like my about me page. And over here, you're linking like resume as well as projects. So I, so I structured my portfolio um, in this way. So starting off with the about me page and then the resume and then YouTube projects, courses and contact. And I placed the uh, resume and the projects directly over here so people can easily get a quick summary of who I am and the projects that I've done. I think this is especially important uh, to have it very, very visible if the people who are meant to be seeing your portfolio website are gonna be like recruiters or managers. So directly here, I have my picture, which I'm probably gonna change later. I feel like the color doesn't exactly match that well, um, but it's okay for now. So I have my picture, I have data scientist, which is my job position. And then I have my social media links, which is YouTube as well as LinkedIn. Click on my resume and then you can go to my resume tab, which is this one. Um, and over here, I have my work experience, uh, what I'm doing, and then technology summer analyst at Goldman Sachs from before, research assistant, I have my education as well as my professional skill set. So I didn't include everything that's on my resume, but these are the major highlights that are on my resume. People can also just download directly my resume uh, over here, and then that's just a PDF version of my resume. The other button to click on is the projects button, which just leads us to the project tab over here. This is where you get to showcase the projects that you've done and also the projects that you're currently working on and just really like bringing the entries in your resume to life as well as putting in all of the projects that you're currently working on that were not able to make the cut on your resume yet. So for me, the three things that I have here are, first one is my is a completed project and the other two are projects that I'm currently working on. All three of them um, don't actually show up on my resume. So the first one is is the YouTube comment sentiment analysis. And this is when I did sentiment analysis on YouTube comments from different videos and then kind of just did an analysis based upon that. And here I just chose a photo that I think is kind of relevant. Let me actually show you guys what it looks like on the editor. So on the editor here, um, the functionality is very much like drag and drop kind of functionality in their editor. So it's not like you have to like do any coding. It's literally like, for example, I can just move this around and place it wherever I want. Um, in this case, I probably want a center. So I'm just gonna put it back over there. Uh, but for the image here, you can just change your image into anything that you want to change. <laughs> this is the photo on my, um, on my Facebook still. This is my old photo when I had short hair. What do you guys think? 
long hair or short hair. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so here, you know, I just typed in YouTube and the image that popped up, which is this one, I just chose that one as the relevant image. For my trading bot, um, Jake and I made a trading bot and we did a live stream on it. So you can click here and that just links directly to the video, for example, like over here. Um, and then you can just watch that video. And then I just added a relevant photo about stonks. And finally, for project engagement, this is the project I'm working on with, with Ken and Forrest. You guys can click the links here as well and it leads to their channels. I'm working on a YouTube comments leaderboard. So Ken already has a prototype version of the leaderboard and he gives out prizes. So you should check that out as well. And we're trying to build that to something that's a little bit more scalable. Click check out our progress. That leads to Ken's video um, talking about what the future is of the common leaderboard project and then all the other videos that we've done that are related to that as well. Because I'm pretty interested in investing and in trading, I'm thinking I probably will at some point have another tab over here um, just to like put all the trading and investing stuff and the projects I'm doing separately over here. But at this point, since I only have that one live stream that I did and two trading bots that came out of it, I'm probably just going to leave it here under project section until that's done. There's only three projects on here right now, and I really wish I can put more of my older projects as well. Um, like, for example, I have some bioinformatics projects and also like some stuff I did at hackathons, for example, a random food generator that I talk about uh, in my how to learn how I would learn to code if I could do it all over again, like all of these things that I've done in the past. I really wish that I could just like put them on here, but that's actually one of my biggest regrets. I didn't organize my code properly. Um, some of it's on GitHub, but it's like not organized properly. And then other stuff is just like, it's not even on GitHub. It's just like random piece of code that I have lost now at this point. I wish that I just took a little bit more effort and just, you know, have it decently organized or even better, just build like a really quick front end using Streamlit or something like that. If you're going for a data science project and people can actually see the product afterwards. Just cleaning up your code and just having a little uh, front end is actually so easy to do. It doesn't take that much time at all. So I really, really wish that I did that, but I have learned from my mistakes. So at least now I do at least clean up my code um, so I can put it as part of my portfolio. So don't be like me. Pardon the scene switch. So moving on to the YouTube tab, this is where I have some of my featured videos, like how to self-study technical things, how I would learn to code if I could start over, as well as how to learn data science in 2021. Each of these also links to the video. So how to self-study technical things, that just links over there and then people can check that out over there. So the format that I have here is actually exactly the same as the one that I have for projects, which I quite like. I think in the future, I'm probably gonna add like an infinite scroll to it um, and then maybe just like add more videos as well. But yeah, I think for now, it's good. The next up is the courses tab. And this is where I'll be putting the courses that I've made. Uh, currently, I only have one that's gonna be coming out, which is called SQL for Data Science Interviews, which I'll be doing with 365 Data Science, which should be released ooh, probably end of this month or next month. So really, really excited for that. And I really hope you guys will enjoy it. For now, I just have like a placeholder. It has like a nice SQL picture. And then it just says coming soon over here. Hopefully in the future, I'll be able to populate this with more courses as well. And then last up is the contact. So contact here is just let's talk. And I have my first name, last name, you know, your pretty normal stuff. And then people can send me a message directly to my email, which is over here. And there you go, a quick walkthrough of my portfolio website. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and possibly found it motivating for you to also build out your own portfolio. I'll be releasing another video in two weeks or so, uh, which is going to be a tutorial on how I built my own portfolio website step by step. Thanks again to Wix for sponsoring today's video. You can get started and create your own website portfolio by checking out this link or clicking the link in the descriptions below. See you guys in the next video or live stream.